please don't turn left. For the love of God, thank you. Oh, there's the pegs. <laughs> Found you. What is going on everyone? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. This one has been a very well requested episode. We are featuring, almost dropped my gloves, we are featuring Honda's Rebel 1100. This is a motorcycle that many of you have been asking about, many of you are interested in, you want to learn more about it. Um, it's a very popular bike. We get a lot of comments on this machine, and here we have one. Why do we have one? Well, you guys already know. This is a giveaway motorcycle. Yes, that is right. We are giving this thing away for free. Go to yamanube.co. Find out how you can get entered to win under the Modern Classic Giveaway Sweepstakes. You're going to want to enter to win there. You can also get your entries on yammynoobmerch.com. Every dollar you spend gets you an entry to win. And as well, remember, you can sign up for free on the website. Get your entries that way. There's all kinds of ways to get entered to win this thing. Highly encourage you to check out the links below and learn how you can get entered to win this fantastic motorcycle. I'll be giving it away for free. So that's why I have one of these. It's not a demo bike. It's not a loaner bike. I have purchased this motorcycle with my own hard-earned money. But the question is, should you purchase a Rebel 1100 with your hard-earned money? Well, we're going to find out today in the first ride review of this machine. So what are we working with here? So Honda looked at the cruiser landscape and they said, okay, well, Indians got their Scout. It's kind of a big, bad cruiser bike, heritage-style motorcycle. The Sportster's on its way out. Got the Yamaha Bolt that's basically trying to be a Sportster. And Honda goes about things differently. If you're familiar with the way that Honda solves problems and finds niches in the marketplace, you can see it with their Ridgeline pickup truck, right? They solve problems in interesting and different ways. So they said, we're not going to try to make a heritage model. We're not going to make something that harkens back to the past. We're going to make a new school cruiser motorcycle that ticks off the boxes that you want from a cruiser machine, but gives you modern day amenities and modern day features that you can be proud of to own. So this is a paradigm shift for cruiser motorcycles, in my opinion. So what are we working with here? Honda features a 1084cc parallel twin engine in this. Now, very important note, this has a 270 degree crank. So that means it fires a little bit differently than a 180 degree crank that you'd find on a Ninja 400 or a Ninja 650 or something like that. So this is a very unique kind of firing order. However, nowadays with stuff like the RS660, MT-07, Triumph Bonneville, the 270 degree crank is becoming a little bit more common. So this motorcycle makes 84 horsepower and 72 foot-pounds pounds of torque comes on very early in the rev range you're not going to be having to scream this thing out or anything it only redlines at about 7500 or 8000 rpm liquid cooled as you can see right there with the radiator um, and this is a pretty nice little package as you can tell honda went the whole blacked out look uh, you could literally spend all day looking at everything that they made sure that they blacked out the more time i spend with this motorcycle the more i notice that they literally blacked out everything they possibly could. You can tell right in there for the brakes on the brake caliper and the brake discs, excuse me. Uh, that's all black right there where normally that would be gold or something like that. Um, so they, they really want the whole bananas and really blacked out the whole thing. Uh, price point for this bad boy is $92.99. However, these are in such high demand that it would be very hard for you to walk out the door with this motorcycle for anything less than $10.5 in my opinion. Um, that's about what we paid for this machine, if I remember correctly. And uh, they are very, very high in demand. This was like one of the last ones I found at the dealership, so people are really snapping these up. And it's for a good reason. I think it's a pretty snazzy looking motorcycle. As you can tell here, it's got the blacked out front uh, headlight right there. If you flip the key over here, you can see it. It's got the side mounted ignition here, like normal traditional cruisers. You can take a look at the lights right there. It's a pretty cool looking design. Uh, I think it's pretty striking. The whole blacked out look really works for this in my opinion. Uh, over here you got the dash, as you would on any normal motorcycle. Uh, and let's talk about it really quick before we get out on the road with this thing. Uh, this motorcycle has a pretty nifty little dash. It's got a round system right here with the side mounted uh, display here for your check engine lights, your neutrals, everything else, the important stuff like when you high beam, you put it in neutral, uh, it will alert you right there. You've got three power modes in this bad boy. You have sport, which gives you a blend of power. Uh, traction control and engine braking. You can dial that back to user mode, which is I have here. Rain mode, 
standard mode and back to sport. I'm going to keep it in user mode because that's what I've been doing. This motorcycle features cruise control, which is a nice addition. Uh, traction control is very bare bones. You're not talking a six axis IMU or anything like that. Very simple traction control. And uh, really nice switch clusters here. Honda reliability, Honda features and benefits here. It always feels really good to touch Honda stuff. Um, the gas tank's a bit of a funny shape, but we're going to get into that as well in our detailed ride as we get off on the road here. But uh, let's start the bike up, shall we? I think you guys have waited long enough. Let's hear how she sounds. 1084cc parallel twin comes to life. You get a nice little bark of an engine note. And if you guys are Honda fans, you will know that this engine comes from the Africa Twin Adventure Bike. It has been a little bit modified to be in this motorcycle. It's not exactly as it comes from the Africa Twin. It's much more of a torque first kind of engine in this configuration, but it is the same Africa Twin. One thing that I like about this bike is that when it's sitting on the side here, although it is a very refined, easygoing motorcycle, you get a very light little shake in the gas tank here. That's a nice feature on this thing. One more thing I wanted to say as well, which is very important for the cruiser segment, is rear suspension. So this has a Showa piggyback rear suspension right here, and this has 3.7 inches of travel, which is pretty good compared to your Sportsters or your Indians. This thing actually can handle a corner pretty well, given that it also weighs 487 pounds wet and ready to ride, which is substantially lighter, substantially lighter than anything else in the category. So we've got a motorcycle with a punchy engine, lightweight, good suspension, should be a ride of a bike to ride. Let's get it on the road and let's find out. Uh, cruising to a stop here with the Rebel 1100. The first thing that you notice about this bike as you take off with it is uh, it's super refined, man. This doesn't feel like your Sportsters, your Indians, nothing like that. And it's not supposed to. This is a totally different type of motorcycle despite it being a cruiser bike this is metric cruisers doing the metric cruiser thing man this thing is buttoned up polished refined it is smooth as silk it is not a herky jerky lumpy kind of big bad cruiser bike it's meant to be something completely different so as you take off with it you already immediately feel the lightweight feeling of this motorcycle you already immediately feel how it's super nimble super lightweight compared to anything else in the category and i really like that there's basically no downsides to making a bike lighter um, except if you're talking like a big bagger cruiser type of bike sometimes you want a little bit more weight to keep yourself nice and planted but as you can tell this thing does not have a windscreen equipped with it it's not intended to be a big touring motorcycle, but it can definitely handle some mileage. This would make a great commuter motorcycle. It would make a fantastic everyday kind of bike for sure. So let's talk through the controls here. Throttle response is pretty good on the Rebel 1100. You can tell here on off, very positive engagement for that. You're not talking anything that's snappy on the on off. Very simple, easygoing, linear throttle. You get on the power here. Let the bike feed that engine and uh, it feels nice. It's very composed, very linear throttle. I would be shocked if Honda made a bike in 2021 that didn't have a very linear throttle. But the one thing that I like about this bike a lot is the clutch feel. The clutch feel on this motorcycle is sublime. Seriously, one of the best that I've felt. The engagement's light and easy, it's tactile, it's rewarding. It's super light and friendly, um, and it's just butter smooth. You'd swear it was a hydraulic system, but it's not. It's just a simple cable actuated throttle. I don't know what they've done to make it feel so good, but the uh, shift engagement feels awesome as we click up here through fifth gear. Lovely, lovely, lovely shifting on this bike. Par for the course too for Japanese motorcycles. Neutral is super easy to find, and this is just a really buttoned up motorcycle. There's no two ways about it. I mean, Honda's gonna sell you something that feels awesome to ride. The levers feel really good as well as you pull this thing to a stop here, grab on the front brake. Just It just has a great lever feel as well. And I like how the levers are black too. Again, the more time you spend with the uh, Rebel 1100, just the more you notice that every little thing is black. Even the bolts here, those are black. The levers are black. Um, 
these bolts down here are silver for the uh, triple clamp, but uh, hey, maybe not everything could be black, right? <laughs> but yeah, I'll show you guys right here, we're talking about finding neutral, it's so easy, just boom, finds neutral, no problem, which is always a big thing that I like to see in uh, new motorcycles, is how easily can I find neutral. Looking at you, Ducati and Aprilia, so hard to find neutral on those bikes. Now, I think what a lot of people want to know about this thing is, um, is it beginner friendly? I think a lot of people are interested in this bike as a first one because they look at something like the Sportster 1200 and people are like, oh man, that's a perfectly fine bike to start on. It's got a little bit more punch than you might be used to, but uh, you'll be totally fine. Personally for me, I feel like the Rebel 1100 is probably the absolute tippy top most of a beginner bike that you should probably consider. This thing actually has a decent amount of power and punch. You're talking 72 foot-pounds of torque uh, at a pretty low RPM, a relatively light weight. Uh, I don't think that we would be considering anything with that much torque and that kind of weight a beginner bike. So keep in mind, it's a blend of things when we talk about if something is beginner appropriate. And this bike, even though it is a cruiser in that 1100cc displacement, uh, this thing is, in my opinion, not an ideal beginner bike. And that's okay because Honda will sell you a Rebel 500, that's a smaller displacement on this, that will be a perfect stepping stone motorcycle to then get you to this point. So don't feel like you have to skimp out if you do like the Rebel line. Uh, Honda is more than happy to sell you this motorcycle with a smaller engine. You can actually get a Rebel 300 as well if you don't want to get the 500, if you want something very mild manner to learn on, which is totally cool. A lot of people want a 300 to learn on and that's totally fine. Um, one of the cool features about this bike is uh, it has a DCT transmission as an option. DCT stands for dual clutch transmission. And that is such an interesting thing to add to a motorcycle. Very few manufacturers, if any, are investing any time and effort into the DCT systems. But this has been Honda's big push for several years now. They've been doing this DCT thing. It started with the Gold Wings, I think, and then it trickled to the Africa Twin. Now you can get them on the Rebel 1100. I think it's only a matter of time until Honda has the ability to put the DCT in even an entry-level motorcycle like the uh, CBR 500R, for example. Uh, and that is just really, really neat. Now, I have not ridden the DCT model. One of the videos we'd like to make is taking a DCT Rebel 1100, comparing it against this manual Rebel 1100, and seeing what the differences are, how they feel to ride, and honestly, just for me to get the know-how and the lowdown on a DCT motorcycle. Uh, I've never ridden one before, and it would be interesting to try one out. Um, as we sit here at a stoplight, I'd like to tell you that the Rebel 1100 is not that hot of a bike. Um, the exhausts are routed correctly underneath you like they should be for a normal motorcycle, not like the Sportster or anything like that, or the exhaust pipe is right near you. Um, and I, I like that. It's a, it's a very cool running motorcycle, very understressed engine, and that's really cool. The other thing I like too is as you roll down the road with it, you get this bassy kind of note from that parallel twin. If you get on the gas and then you roll off, you can tell you got a big engine underneath you and it's got this cool bassy note. I am dying to get an exhaust on this motorcycle because if it's anything like Yamaha's MC07 with their cross plane or 270 degree crank parallel twin, this bike is also going to sound awesome when we uncork it and open it up. Now, one of the best things about the Rebel 1100 is how it feels mid-corner to ride. So this is a bike that you can actually get after it in the twisties. You can actually have yourself some fun with the Rebel 1100 and ride it in a fun way. Whereas a lot of cruisers tend to fall apart as you pick up the pace, this thing says, no, I got you. You're with me and we're gonna have some fun riding on these twisty roads. So this bike has up front a 130-70-18 tire and out back has a 180-65-16. So you got an 18 up front and a 16 out back. So that's a little strange. Normally for sport bikes, you see a 17, 17. Sometimes for cruisers, you see a, an 18 and a 17. Sometimes for adventure bikes, you see a 19 and a 17. I have never seen a 18, 16 setup. Not a huge difference though, because you're still getting a bigger front wheel than the rear wheel. So you're getting that kind of interesting cruisery kind of handling. But the big thing you notice on this bike is the weight. 
Now, this motorcycle also features mid-mounted controls, which is quite different than a lot of cruisers that have forwards that'll have to feed out over here. With these mid-mounted controls, you're able to actually get after a little bit more on the Rebel. You can actually try to search for the uh, peg clearance. And I'll tell you what, I have been riding this bike around a little bit today and I've yet to find the foot pegs on any twisty road that I've taken it down, which is pretty impressive. I thought that I'd be scraping pegs pretty soon on the Rebel, but with my kind of normal street bike pace that I'm not really trying to set lap records on our twisty roads here, it's surprisingly capable. Really, really fun bike. Um, I think a lot of folks will be pleased to hear this and will be upset with me with saying this, but Honda has basically made a better Vulcan 650. Now, Vulcan 650 owners have been <laughs> lambasted a little bit on this channel. We've made fun of them a little bit and all that, but um, the Vulcan 650 is a great beginner bike. And if you like the Vulcan 650, you like the flavor of that parallel twin, you don't want to give that up, and you want something just as sporty, you should really check out a Rebel 1100. That's a great stepping stone motorcycle. That's a great next step for you after your Vulcan 650. You get yourself a Rebel 1100. I think you'll be really pleased with this thing because a motorcycle like this is not really about fitting into the cruiser mold. You buy a Rebel 1100 because you actually want to be a little bit different than your traditional cruiser bro, and you're not super interested in the V-twin thing. You just want a laid back slung motorcycle like this that happens to have a torquey two-cylinder engine, but ticks off some of those boxes. But it doesn't have to be a Harley. It doesn't have to be a heritage model. You're not into chrome. You're not into all this stuff. You just want something that is fun to ride, rewarding, enjoyable, and it can actually flick from side to side and still feels like a normal motorcycle. Let's be honest here. An Iron 883, a 1200 Sportster, even an Indian Scout, those don't really feel like normal bikes. They have a bit of a weirdness about them, which makes them interesting to ride, but also makes them a little bit funny when you try to ride them like you would a normal motorcycle down a twisty road. Yeah, the torque is just delicious on this thing, man. Really, really nice flat plateau of torque. Why are we going 25 miles per hour? That is a bummer. Please don't turn left. For the love of God. Thank you. All right. Let's see if we can't find those pegs on this bike, huh? Taking it here through these twisties. Yeah, the Rebel really handles itself well over bumps and stuff. Honestly, like the extra suspension travel at the rear compared to a traditional cruiser really, really makes you feel the difference on this thing. Um, it actually feels so much more composed than your Sportsters and those kinds of motorcycles. And it's got a pretty good amount of giddy up and go. <laughs> It'll definitely, definitely keep up with pretty much most sport bikes, I would say. This thing is not a slouch by any means. But I'm just dying to get an exhaust on this thing, man. The best praise I can give the Rebel 1100 is the more time I spend with it, the more I like it. And that doesn't happen that often with motorcycles. I feel like I've gotten to a point now where I've ridden enough motorcycles that after about 40 or 50 miles in the saddle, I've gotten a good impression of what they're about and what they're gonna show me. But this is a slow burn kind of bike. This is a bike that slowly tells you what it's into and how it rides and is more rewarding the more time you spend with it, um, which is really cool. I wasn't really having many expectations about this bike before getting into this review and this first ride, but um, I'm really pleased with it. I like this thing. I like the mid-mounted controls because it allows me to either put my heels out like a normal cruiser like this, or I can put them on my balls of my feet like a sport bike and really get after it on this bike if I wanted to, which is a lot of fun. I think that's the cool thing about the Rebel. It's still a fun motorcycle. Sometimes cruisers can take themselves a little bit too seriously and you realize you're like, ah, you know, it's not supposed to be that much fun to ride or that flickable because it's a cruiser. But this is a bike that doesn't really compromise all that much, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a nice bit of torque there. Yeah, this is, this is a really sweet handling little bike. The thing as well about motorcycles is, you know, we can, we can sit there and be like, oh, this doesn't have Olin suspension and blah, blah, blah. But 
really the fundamentals of a bike have to be there and this bike's fundamentals are so there the weight is right the handling is right the geometry is right for this type of bike and you can have a ton of fun with this thing um so if you're into the rebel look if you're into this bike yeah it i'd say it definitely lives up to the hype this is a good motorcycle i, I really haven't been able to fault it for anything just yet i'm really enjoying my time with it i'm kind of sad we have to give it away it's a cool little bike What's interesting is, despite it having a good amount of low-end punch, you can still t you can still tell it wants to kind of rev out a little bit, you know? This bike likes to be pulled a little bit further along the rev range as you get it up here. Get that little bit extra sense on it, you know? It has just that extra bit of punch at the top. Uh, I'd love to see a dyno graph of this thing, because that's how it feels to me from the saddle, but it'd be cool to see it verified on a dyno. Man, this is a cool bike. So nice side to side. Super nice from side to side here. Playful too. <laughs> Coming a little too hot in your corners. <laughs> oh, there's the pegs. <laughs> Found you. All right. So, it does appear that around 7 tenths-ish uh, does give up the ghost a little bit for the pegs. I did scrape my pegs a little bit there. <laughs> but it's a cruiser. It kind of feels like you're supposed to burn the pegs a little bit on a cruiser, you know? It kind of feels like you're meant to cruise them out a little bit, you know? Kind of scrape the pegs, get after a little bit. That's the fun. It's just letting you know that you are at the maximum lean angle allowed by the motorcycle. Or at least the pegs anyways. Alrighty folks, let us do a little pull on the Rebel, shall we? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty quick. It doesn't have a lot by way of top end power. It's not gonna straighten out your arms like Honda says on the press briefing on this bike online. But it's still fun to ride. That's the thing for me. This is still a ton of fun to ride and rewarding to ride, which is honestly more important than top end power. I don't think top end power is all that important, particularly on a cruiser. Uh, what I like about this bike is I'm actually gonna show you guys here. I'm gonna click it up into sixth gear because I wanna show you the low end punch this thing has. So we're in sixth gear here, right? Totally inappropriate for the speed and pace with which we're going at but you can actually just lug this thing along in sixth gear and catch up to a van in front of you. <laughs> it works super well. The engine's got a lot of character and torque down low, which is cool. I was actually a little concerned about that when we got this bike. I was thinking the 1100 Rebel would be, uh, you know, a little too, you know, docile, a little too sanitized, but I like the way it feels down low. Um, is it, does it have as much pizzazz as a 1275 Sportster? Not even close, but this is a better, more complete motorcycle that you can just buy off the showroom floor. And that's kind of awesome too, uh, you gotta say. Now I will say, what, one thing that is weird about this bike, two things that I think are strange, are the ergonomics. Uh, I don't love them, honestly. I think the mid-mounted controls work for this type of motorcycle, but I'm not super in love with the way that my arms are kind of stretched out like quite a bit. I've barely abandoned my arms and I feel like I'm a normal sized human. So I can't imagine that someone who is shorter than me, cause I'm about 5'11", can't imagine someone who's shorter than me would have a, a good time with their arms on this machine. And I do feel that the seat to uh, pegs to bar situation is a bit strange. It's like my arms are really stretched out but I'm also like pitched forward. So my, my, my back is arched, but my arms are stretched out. Um, for me personally, I'd have to make some adjustments to this motorcycle to make it fit me. Uh, I honestly wouldn't mind having forwards on this thing. Although I did mention to you guys that I like the mid-mounted controls on this bike. I prefer forwards on my cruisers just cause I feel like it makes more sense. And I would like uh, some bars that are a little bit more swept back. So I'd like a, a little bit more straight back situation, not this hunched over kind of goblin look that you get on this bike stock. 
but uh, it's it's not terrible and, and that's really you know that's a person to person thing you might swing a leg over the rebel and think that it sits perfectly i just don't really love the way it fits for me uh the other thing that i don't quite understand is this gas tank um it has this weird sport bike cutout here kind of a muscly sport bike cutout but it's very long and like narrow uh it's not quite right in my opinion. I, I kind of wish they would have made the gas tank a bit of a different shape, perhaps a little lower, honestly. I actually really like the shape of the Indian Scouts gas tank, despite it being super mega low of a bike. Uh, I think that works a little bit better than this motorcycle right here. But honestly, if that's the only complaints I have about a bike, that means it's a pretty damn good motorcycle. And this really is a pretty damn good bike. Uh, I. I'm pretty impressed with it, I gotta say. For a cruiser motorcycle, uh, for a Honda even, <laughs> which I, you know, I don't love Hondas that much. Um, really buttoned up, really pulled together, really good motorcycle. Um, I do wish that they flipped the horn and the uh, turn indicators here because I keep hitting the horn uh, when I'm trying to find my turn indicators. I have to remember that it's a Honda and it's backwards for some reason. Now, what do you guys say we get this thing out on the highway, test the cruise control, and test some more features of the Honda 1100 Rebel? Let's go do it. All right, guys, before we get going on the highway here to test the 1100 Rebel, um, one thing I wanted to do is check the speed bump capabilities of it. Very important for a motorcycle, so we've got several road humps here. Shift it down to second. How does it feel? Pretty good for a cruiser. Not bad. That's that 3.7 inches of rear suspension travel doing the Lord's work right there. Huh. <laughs> get to jump a little bit with the Rebel 1100. Let's get another jump going here. Ugh. <laughs> Did I get a little airborne? Perhaps. Perhaps I got a little airborne with the Honda 1100 Rebel. Maybe I'm about to get airborne again. Let's do it. <laughs> do I scramble and jump all the giveaway bikes? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do, ladies and gentlemen. I do be scrambling and jumping the giveaway bikes. One thing I like on this bike is that you can dial in the engine braking. That's kind of a feature you don't see that often. Uh, strange that for your modes, it gives you power attraction and engine braking. You, you'd imagine that it would give you, I guess it's not as, well, I mean, I guess that makes sense. I was about to say slide control, but I was like, why on earth would you need slide control on a Rebel 1100? <laughs> you could probably just kick out the rear tire for funsies, but why would you have that? Now, one thing I will say too, because I did try to wheelie it on my very first kind of runabout with it. And as far as I can tell, there's no way to completely turn off traction control to allow front wheel lift on this motorcycle. It pretty much always cuts out, um, which is a bummer. Now, if anyone knows of a way to completely turn off traction control and allow you to have fun with it, uh, let me know in the comments, because as far as I could tell riding this thing around, there was not a way of doing that. So we'll see here, shifting at 3000 RPM. Yeah, good low on punch, man. That's sweet, that's exactly what you want out of a cruiser, just that, just that snap from low down. Can't wait to get an exhaust on this thing. Got a bicyclist coming right at me in the oncoming lane. Alrighty, guys. Now, as I mentioned, we're on the highway now. The Honda 1100 Rebel has cruise control, which is such a great feature to put on this bike. So thoughtful of Honda to do that for us. So, get it up here at about 60 miles per hour. And I'm gonna have to use my left hand because my right hand has some nerve damage. It's harder for me to do that. So I will press the cruise control here. We'll press set. And we are cruising at 60 miles per hour. That is such a thoughtful feature on this motorcycle. And if you guys have never used cruise control, you'll probably think that it's a bit of a gimmick. You'll say, oh yeah, come on, why do you need cruise control? Be a man, keep gripping the throttle. But I'll tell you what, after a long day in the saddle and you're just trying to get back to the office if you've been on a bike for five hours, you want cruise control to chill on the highway. It's a very nice feature. Uh, if you don't know, cruise control will disengage if you brake or shift gears. So if I grab the clutch here, cruise control is off and I'm, I'm slowing to a stop. I never touched any of my brakes, but because I grabbed a gear down, my cruise control disengaged and uh, it turned off. So it's just like a car or something like that. And I really commend Honda for their ease of use on the cruise control. Really, really works nicely and I like it a lot. Yeah, I honestly, I can't say enough good things about this bike, man. It works super well. Um, and the more time I spend riding it, the more I'm like, you know what? This is a good motorcycle and it doesn't do anything wrong. 
there's something to be said about the kind of you know, it's not super characterful, like an Indian scout or anything like that. It doesn't leave a big impression on you. But if, you, if you're into this blacked out look and you want a motorcycle that, that does that whole thing, the Rebel's awesome, man. How could you go wrong with this thing? It's super sweet. So guys, I will make a quick point for today's video. Uh, I just slapped the gas tank and it's loose for some reason. Perhaps they didn't button this down at the factory, but I don't know why this gas tank is loose. That's probably why it's vibrating. Maybe it's to add the character and the panache of a cruiser motorcycle. You feel the rumble of the engine, slight shake of the gas tank. But uh, that, that is weird. That shouldn't be just loose. So might want to look into that for all you Rebel owners. I will say as well for having a single disc up front, this bike works pretty well under braking. I was actually concerned. I was like, well, you know, it's uh, kind of powerful. I would hope that it's braked correctly, but because it's relatively lightweight versus something like an Indian Scout or a Sportster, which those bikes weigh about 550-ish pounds, if you can believe it, this thing weighs 70 pounds less than a Sportster. That makes it brake a lot easier. You don't need super powerful brakes if you're weighing less. So it is, despite it being an 1100cc motorcycle, despite it weighing 487 pounds and having only a single disc up front, it's a relatively big disc and caliper setup. So you still get good stopping power and pretty good feedback from the lever despite these being rubber hoses right here these are not stainless steel lines but again if you want to do a brake upgrade on your bike it's a relatively easy upgrade to do Alrighty, everybody now that we are clear of the traffic light of death it took me five minutes to get through let us test the slow speed on the old rebel here we're going to left here in the uh davenport village i guess it's called no idea what this place is near the country club Let's check the slow speed, shall we? Now, we already know how it does over speed bumps. Not even an issue on the Rebel. Super easy. It's a motorcycle. It can handle speed bumps. But what we want to test is the slow speed maneuverability. Because for a lot of people, this would be a second bike, maybe a first bike if they're feeling a little zesty with it. And uh, I'm proud to report that the Rebel is great in slow speeds. This thing is super easy to handle. Uh, because of its lightweight, you can very easily position this motorcycle anywhere you need to. It's really simple to pop yourself little U-turns and stuff. You see right here, got a nice close U-turn here. Here we go. Very simple to take the Rebel around in slow speeds. Uh, one thing I like as well is the brake lever, as we mentioned in the reveal video of this bike. It's like this knurled kind of aftermarket looking brake lever and it feels really nice to use. Um, I actually really like using this uh, brake lever. Since this motorcycle has a very low seat height, it's very easy to get a foot down on this thing. I don't think anyone would have troubles flat footing this motorcycle. It's very simple to get a foot down, position yourself with the Rebel. If you're not super comfortable with riding at slow speeds and you don't know what's happening, it's very easy to just uh, pull in the clutch, brake, and then get uh, both feet down, just like that. Super easy to do uh, on the Rebel here. So go here, do a couple more little slow speed stuff, show you guys here. Whip it around in these parking spots. Very simple on the Rebel. Almost too simple, <laughs> one could say. It almost feels like, uh, so my gold standard for slow speed and maneuverability are adventure bikes. Those bikes are so simple. Adventure bikes and dual sports. They are so simple to whip around in slow speed conditions. And the Rebel is no different. This is super simple to ride in slow speeds. Very light, very nimble, very flickable. And you really notice that lightweight when you're just tooling around a parking lot or something like this. Um, super easy bike to maneuver in slow speeds. As you tell here, I'm just kind of whipping it back and forth. Very, very simple motorcycle to ride. Intuitive, I would even say, which is a word I reserve only for bikes I like a whole lot. <laughs> oh, gotta get up to highway speed. Yeah, it makes it so it makes a big splash under acceleration from like zero to 70, which is what you want for a street bike. After that, it's it's there's not a lot, honestly. Uh, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. There's there's not a whole lot to write home about on the Rebel after about 75 or 80 miles per hour. But uh, we can absolutely test that cruise control once again. Go right over here. Set at 60 miles per hour, and someone gets in my lane. That's fine. I'll get one over. We're cruising. Set it up a little bit. And 
increase the speed, just like you would on any other cruise control on a car or something. And you're chilling, cruising on a cruiser, one would say. How nice is that? Oh, got a bug that splatted right in my face. That's nice. guys i think that's going to wrap up the rebel 1100 first ride and review i hope you've enjoyed this video my takeaway is that this is a very cool motorcycle i like it a lot it works super well and there's very little to dislike about it if you're not a purist about cruiser motorcycles i think this is a bike that you would really enjoy um, i'm really enjoying riding it as a pretty seasoned motorcyclist who's ridden a lot of different motorcycles it's fun. It's a good bike. It does everything really, really well. However, we are going to see with more of the content we're going to be making with it, if it actually stacks up to stuff like the Sportster, the Indian Scouts, you know, your diehard traditional sport bikes, which one is actually better. And remember, we are giving this bike away for free. So hit the link down below to yamanoop.co. Go to yamanoopers.com. Get yourself entered to win in any way you see fit. And I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Makes a good bongo drum. <laughs> Can't believe how long I've been sitting at this light. Oh my god. Cannot believe how long I've been sitting at this light. Do 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 do. Cannot believe how long I've been sitting at this light. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Cannot believe how long I've been sitting at this light sitting at this light it's been like five minutes man Nium. Ooh. come on baby come on yes turn green let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go come on please move oh my god please go oh my god let's go don't let me sit here again i'm not gonna sit here again i'm not gonna sit here again come on come on come on come on go 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 yeah all right Ah, bummer for you, my little squid. This video is actually over. But lucky for you, there's plenty of other Yamanoo videos you can check out right over here. What's going to happen to them? I don't know. I haven't seen them. But you can watch them right now.